Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the channel. And a couple days ago, I built this thing, which is called the Boyeralt machine, which is probably pronounced wrong because it's French. Uh, and this is a historical replica, a historically accurate replica of this thing. And uh, there were some issues with it, and I have replicated all those issues as, as well. So one of the issues is it's extremely slow, as you can clearly see. Another issue is it is virtually impossible to turn. Um, apparently they had to use jacks, lift it up, and just kind of slowly rotate it, and it could only do like 45 degrees at a time. So it was absolutely terrible at steering. And then the other issue uh, is it also has a, a tendency to bottom out um, in specific situations where the ground in front of it is lower than the ground behind it. Uh, case in point right here. You can watch this apex. As it angles down, he gets stuck. And they do a really smooth edit. <laughs> and they, they prop the front end up so it's a little bit more straight and get across the, uh, the gap here. So my version is so historically accurate that it has inherited all of these flaws. And I thought it might be good to have an episode where we kind of, we evolve it, bring it into the present day with current technology. We're really not gonna be making anything that fancy, to be honest. We're just gonna be fixing the faults with this thing. Uh, so I'm gonna try to make a turn. I'm gonna try to make it less likely to bottom out. And I'm also gonna try to make it be able to go faster without uh, getting derailed and that I think is actually going to be the more difficult one to do So let's start with the easy problem first I honestly think the bottoming out issue is gonna be the easiest to solve All right, so check it out if I come down off of this lift here You can see yep if there's anything underneath it like that it is just going to get completely bottomed out So there's a couple of ways to fix that one way is to modify the tracks and make it unable to bend for further than 180 degrees like that because this is going more than 180 degrees which is causing the issue uh the other strategy is just fix the design of the vehicle rolling over it and keep the ability to contour to the terrain like this which i think will give it more flexibility literally and figuratively it'll be more flexible in uh what kind of terrain it can go over all right so my solution raise the seat up we're essentially going to remove this entire flat panel and pretty much just move it right up to where the seat is and that should give us plenty of uh wiggle room all right there we go we can just take this out and delete it and already this is gonna completely solve the issue i'm pretty confident in that all right we can actually adjust how extreme the test is gonna be by adjusting the lift as well so now Look at this angle right here. This is a massive angle, but no bottoming out. Oh, okay. It, the lift fell through the <laughs> creation itself. All right, come on back down. Come on back down. We're still good. Everything's still good here. All right, perfect. All right, one problem already resolved. Now, the next problem is the turning. So, um, turning with this is not an easy concept. Uh, first of all, the track and this thing are two separate creations, meaning that I can't actually draw any connections between these two objects. So I can't have this have any controls hooked up to the track in any way and vice versa. So I pretty much have to have something attached to this that is going to move all of the track. So the idea I have in my head is going to kind of be a jack system, uh, is going to be a jack on a wheel that is going to allow us to pivot side to side now there's one issue with this so imagine for instance there's a wheel that comes out of here and pushes down on the ground to lift this thing up and then roll sideways uh there's a problem in that if this pushes down and lifts up the bottom is not going to lift off the ground which is what we need instead the top is just going to lift up and as you can see the bottom <laughs> The bottom doesn't move at all. So that is a severe limitation to this idea, but I think I have a solution for that. Okay, so here's my idea. I just built these two things, and the idea is that uh, these things can fold out and fold back in to get out of the way, and then each segment of track at the front... Oh, I did not... Uh, I did not situate this one right. But each track at the front is going to have this hook... So then what I can do when I want to turn is press number one, and that should allow me to hook right into these things. So now I might actually need to extend them a little bit more, give them some, uh, some more room for error. All right, so with that, now the idea is that if I lift this up, 
it should lift up the whole track with it. See? Perfect. So now, if I have... The idea is to have a wheel extend down. The only issue is that it's going to be off-center because this doesn't have a center point and the bearing is going to be... You have to choose one of these sides. But the wheel is going to be parallel to this right here. It's going to extend down and then it can roll that way or that way, which should essentially have us pivot this entire thing theoretically, I hope. You know what? I think I want to modify where I've attached this and how it attaches. Yep, I'm going to do that. Because right now I realized once we settle back down, in order to continue going forward, I actually have to back up, then put these up, and then go forward again. I don't like that. I want to make it more efficient. All right, so here's the new design. The new design is going to come from the back there, and it's going to come out sideways like that. So now, once we are hooked in, then in order to keep moving forward, it just comes back this way and I don't have to back up at all. So that's gonna be a lot more convenient. All right, so one of the things I'm noticing is uh, since I took this whole concrete base out from under here, it's not bottom heavy enough anymore. So I'm actually going to have to add a layer back. It's gonna be higher, so we're still gonna be way more capable of going over 180 degree plus angles. But yeah, we just really need some of this weight back down here. All right, so this should be sufficient right here. We can go right up into here, into this uh, hook. We will have something push us up. And yep, even in this location, it still gives us the same result. All right, that's good. Now I got to create the wheel mechanism, which I'm thinking is going to attach to the front here. Okay, here we go. First test of it. So the wheel on the front there, obviously, uh, it can go left and right. And we press the button, it's going to go down. Oh, I actually didn't, I didn't adjust the piston length yet. But we go under, we press number one. Our pegs come out and go underneath the hooks. And then we press number two. And now I just gotta adjust this piston length to be an appropriate height. I feel like that is good right there. I think I don't think we need more than that. All right, so now if I press number three. Oh my goodness. Look at this. We're turning. We're turning in place too. <laughs> yep. And then we just press number two to bring it back up. Press number one. Whoops, I accidentally pressed the get out of the seat button. And we can continue on going forward. So now I just got to add one of those to every single segment of track. And we'll only be able to turn just at those hooks on each segment of track. So uh, let me just do that real quick. All right, I think I've got everything in the right position on all of the tracks. I have it on the faster motion right now, which is a little bit less stable sometimes. But uh, let's go ahead and check it out. Let's... Let's do a 180 degree turn right now. So number one, number two, and then we're just gonna turn until we're facing in that general direction. I could speed this up a little bit, but honestly, I kind of feel like the slower speed makes it feel a little bit more like a, it just, it just gives the tank feel to it. You know, the beefy, heavy, intimidating feel. There we go. All right, now we're facing this direction. So now we can press number two. We can press number one, and then we can continue along our, along our way. One of the other... I, I did make another change. I actually changed the material of the top of this to mostly wood instead of concrete, because I did notice that we were much more likely to tilt back now, since we don't have as much weight. Our center of mass isn't as low anymore, so I tried to lower our center of mass by making the top lighter. So now, this is the only other issue we have right now, as you can see how the... I mean... Uh, you're seeing it happen right now, actually. As we go relatively fast, this is the faster speed. The top of it tends to jump a little bit, disconnect from the wheel some, which gives it some instabilities. Oh, boy. Oh, man. How am I going to counteract that? So one of the issues I'm seeing is perhaps I've let this thing... Yeah, maybe I've let it fold just a couple of degrees too much. Like you can see this angle down in the bottom left here. Maybe it's able to go too much. Maybe I should adjust it so that it's up a little bit more and it'll be less likely to hopefully maybe it'll maybe it'll fix it. I don't know. Let's give it a try and see what happens. All right. Hard to see much of a difference, but let's see if it looks any different as we drive. Whoa, okay. Well, ooh. There is a, there's a huge difference, but there's also a, there's a, there's a really sketchy part where I'm trying to zoom in on the top here, but watch, there's one part of it. If you look at the top wheel, you see right there, it doesn't actually touch for a little bit because it won't let it 
right here, it won't let it flex down. So it's not making contact, which is not good because it's not allowed to flex enough. But I think I have a solution for this too. And this could be... Oh yeah, look at that. You see how it was able to go right over the wheel like that? So my solution to this is it's going to be a little bit complicated because I'm going to be using suspension to try to keep this wheel pressurized against the top track. So that way when it lifts up like that, the wheel will hopefully stick with it. But the problem with suspension is if I build the suspension into the vehicle, I have to build it in its fully extended state. And I don't want it to be default in its fully extended state. So I think I'm going to have to use pistons so that the wheels are at a lower position to start off with. And then the pistons are going to automatically pressurize the wheels into the top of the track here. All right, it's going to be much easier to work on this if this thing is on its side. All right, so let's start with this side. So I think what would be cool is if I just have that right there, but I put a piston there. I can't put uh, suspension directly on a piston, and now this makes it too long. So I need to account for all of that. So then that means I'm going to have to extend it back down here more. How many blocks? The wheel's supposed to be right there, so it's another two blocks. All right, so now if I put that wheel right there, is that the same spot? Yep. So I think this is going to be our system. So then as soon as we spawn it in, this piston is going to push the wheel up, but it's not really going to move anywhere because it's just it's already going to be touching the top. It's just going to compress this suspension, basically. And then that suspension will uncompress as soon as the uh, top track lifts off in any way, keeping the wheel hopefully in contact and in the groove. All right, so this logic gate is going to always be on. So as soon as it comes off the lift, it'll extend these pistons. How much do we want to extend them, though? Range of two is actually a complete compression. If I extend them any more than that, it's actually going to push the wheel up more than we want it to. So I think a range of two is going to be exactly what we're looking for. All right, here we go. So keep an eye on those wheels at the top there. When I take this off the lift. Okay, so you can see the suspension is compressed. Oh, they're doing a weird... Oh, I haven't attached them back to the engines yet. Hold on. Okay, there we go. I don't know how strong the suspension is going to need to be. Right now, I like that it's not lifting up uh, the top of the track. So let's disconnect this and see what happens. Oh, yeah. You see that? You see how the... Wait, why is... <laughs> oh, I forgot to take off the demonstration suspension. <laughs> okay. That's looking good, though. That's looking really good so far. Okay, let's see. I want to uh, make this make the suspension as strong as they can be without impacting the, um, the ability for this to rest comfortably on top of here. I just put them up by one notch, and they're already showing some ability to lift up the top. And I don't know if that's a good thing. It might be fine. All right, we're going over the tracks. No problem. So this is a speed right now that used to give us some issues. And right now, those suspensions seem to be solving everything. Look at this. And oh no, we're coming up to a wall. Whatever are we going to do? You know what? Now is going to be a good time to turn. Let's go ahead and activate our hooks. Activate number two. And start turning in... Yeah, I guess let's just... Let's just no, let's go in that direction. Yeah, there's all kinds of uneven terrain over here. We're really going to put this thing to the test now. Um, and then we're going to see how fast can I even make this thing go? Are we able to increase the speed now that we have more wheel contact? All right, I think that's good. All right, and now we're ready to head on out again. Really simple. And if it... What happens there? No, this doesn't make any sense. Why is the back end up like that? Why would that be lifting up right now? How did... Physics just seemed to do something really weird. All right, we're going again. Uh, so far, so good. It was after we turned that we had the issue, so maybe turning has something to do with it. All right, we're going to head in the direction of the mound. All right, let's continue forward again. Oh, this is it. This is the this is what was happening. Why did the Why did the back of the track come up with me though? That see this doesn't make any sense. That back gravity should be pulling it down. What? 
This actually makes no sense at all. There's something wrong here. Like there should be there should be nothing keeping this in the air. If I put a bunch more weight on this. Yeah, see? It just falls right down. There's nothing holding that up, but yet it hold it holds itself up. If I delete this. Whoa. Wait, that didn't really make any sense. Hold on. This is starting to indicate that this might be a scrap mechanic glitchiness issue. All right, I seem to have maybe fixed it by um, getting rid of all of these two by one ramp pieces that were preventing the angle from going too far. So now we got to give it the ultimate test though by doing another turn. It Can it continue after turning? Because for some reason that was the culprit before. So let's go in this direction now. That was a small turn. Whoops, forgot to put this down. And that is all that we needed to mess ourselves up before. So are we going to get messed up again? This feels good so far. That is such a weird solution, but if it's a solution, it's a solution. We seem to be able to go now. Okay, can we now continue my original quest here, which was to go over this uneven terrain over here? All right, so far, not too bad. We are slippery. We do slide a bit. The friction isn't the best here, but we are going. We're not having any issues, it seems. All right, here, let's, uh, this is a weird spot to turn, but let's try it. I want to turn over. There's a ditch there. I really want to, really want to put this thing in the ditch. Yeah, there we go. I can't believe it can turn this well on this type of terrain either. All right. Put ourselves back down and continue on forward. Oh, oh, I made a mistake. I should have, I should have pulled the top ahead of me a little bit but you know what i think it just kind of caught up with me kind of all right here's where the ground clearance solution is going to come into play yeah i may have bottomed out there last time oh my goodness i can't believe we're still in the track we haven't been derailed from this yet oh this is some awkward angles happening <laughs> Oh, uh, we tipped over. All right, well, there's nothing I can do about this, that's for sure. But this is like the perfect ditch test right here. If I come at it from the right angle, we're really going to test our um, our bottoming out issue. All right, here we are. I just, I just started right on top of the ditch here. So let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, we definitely would have bottomed out there with our previous design. Ooh. Oh, no. Our wheel. Oh, no, a flaw. Our wheel prevents us here. That front wheel is definitely in the way. All right, none of, none of the modification needs to be made. I think I know what to do about this. I just need to move the seat back a little bit. All right, so I've made it more compact. I moved the seat back. That way the wheel is a lot closer to the body here, which means that uh, it's gonna be less likely to bottom out the way that it was. So let's see if that worked. Oh no, we're a little bit ahead of the cycle, but we're down. Can we get up this section now? Yes, we can, but there's no way. Yeah, there's no, we do not have appropriate contact here at this angle. We're not going to be able to get up over that. Yeah, there's no way that this is going to happen. The only way that this could happen is if we actually had cogwheel contact with both sides of this, which I don't know a real solution to that. All right, now this is the fastest speed we were able to go in the original design but I've made some modifications to this thing. Let's bump the engines up by one and see if we can go any faster now. So before, this was too much. Oh boy, it already feels like too much to be honest, but it looks way more steady. We don't get the bloop anymore at the top. Yeah, this is way more steady. Uh oh, we've, got, we've gotten ahead of the cycle a little bit, but let's, let's do a quick test here. I'm gonna put the top um, the top engines one faster than the bottom engines again. And, oh, now there seems to actually be a friction issue. But, oh, wait, no, look at that. Once we got into the right part of the cycle, this is going pretty fast now. Ooh. Ooh, speed test is a success already. But let's bump it up one more. We're going to take this as far as we can until uh, we can't no more. Next speed notch. Oh, my goodness. This is like, it almost looks like I'm fast forwarding the footage right now. This is not fast forwarded. This is real time. This looks weird. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. We almost got derailed a little bit there. Okay, here, here, here. Let's, uh, we're gonna do a turn. 
I'm gonna turn him that direction since it's nice and wide open. All right, perfect. All right, let ourselves back down and let's hope that we don't have that glitch getting stuck in you. Oh no, did we just get derailed instantly? Oh, we totally got derailed at the top. Dang. I think I found the limits here of... Yeah, we just get instantly derailed now at these speeds. These speeds are not sustainable. But I mean, look at the comparison here. This was the old most stable speed as far as consistency and not getting derailed on flat ground. And the new stable speed, at least what appears to be the new stable speed, is this right here. I mean... It's a little janky, but we're able to keep it going. Look at this, so much faster, so much more stable. It has the ability to turn. It has the ability to avoid bottoming out when going over negative inclines. I think we've made a drastic improvement on the original Boyralt machine, maybe in such a way that this could have been used. <laughs> rather than given up on. All right, so I'm giving it a test here. I put a bunch of um, these things just in the way and let's see what happens. I think I'm gonna go at a slightly slower speed this time, just for some extra stability. Let's see how it handles this. So far, so good. Going up is always really sketchy compared to going down. All right, look at this. Now let's see what happens here. Risk of bottoming out for the old design. But no, this one handles it. No problem at all. So imagine that was all barbed wire. That's the original historical uh, purpose of this, was to just go over barbed wire armaments or whatever. I kind of feel like doing a reverse run at it. Let's go ahead and uh, turn ourselves all the way around. Don't worry, it's better than they used to be able to do back in the day. Still an improvement. <laughs> Way more efficient. Okay, and there we go. I can even adjust myself back and forth to fine tune it. Put ourselves down and continue backwards through the same obstacle. Oh, that, that might be a little bit steep. Uh oh, come on. Come on, it's a little steep, but we're doing it. I actually wasn't expecting to do it that time. Uh-oh, we're not out of the woods yet. Come on. <gasps> oh, we got some derailing going on. I'm trying to back it up. Get back in the groove. Get back in the groove. All right, we're back in the groove. Recovered. Come on. You could do it. Yes. Yes. I can't believe we recovered from a potential derailment. All right, just take it slow. Yeah, I think slower speeds are better for complex obstacles like this. Oh my goodness, we did that. That was way more sketchy, but we're back on flat ground. We're stable again. Whew. All right, I am really happy with the systems that I built to improve this thing. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Is there anything else that you think could have made this thing even better from what it is already? Let me know down below. And any other um, things from history or even from the present or maybe even from the future that doesn't exist yet that you think would be cool to try to replicate in a video game. Let me know down in the comments below. If you guys are enjoying this series of replicating real life creations, I actually put a bunch of them in a playlist right here on the end screen so you can make sure you don't miss out on them. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.